Hi, I'm Michael Chapman. I'm 36 and based in Southwest London and I'm a photographer. I'm a portrait photographer. I started off very early in the game doing a project where I met a hundred different strangers from Twitter. So I met like quite a lot of cool people from that and took portraits of them. And then decided to do a project exploring the male body in a sense that we're constantly projected with these images of like these really perfect bodies within media all the time. And I decided to do something like, these are the actual bodies that you might find in the real world. So that sort of spawned my Above the Sheets project, which basically centers around pictures of people within their bedroom, just kind of like trying to celebrate their bodies, uh, the differences that different people have, also like the things that maybe they're not so happy with that other people might have bellies or a bit of fat or you know scars but just celebrating them and your bodies are all beautiful so i'm making a lemon drizzly sponge it is just a basic cake recipe it's with lemons and like a sugary crunchy kind of topping this is my mum's recipe. It reminds me of being a little kid on camping holidays. Mum would kind of make this before we would go, cut it up into sort of like small squares and then put it in a Tupperware for us to eat over the course of like our entire camping holiday. So it reminds me of like being outside. It's quite like a warming cake, it has a nice feeling to it. <laughs> I chose to bake rather than cook. I don't really enjoy cooking. I'm quite lucky and have a partner that cooks quite a lot for me and he's a really good cook. So mainly I like to bake. It comes from like hanging around with my parents a lot when I was younger. I didn't really have many friends at school. I sort of stayed at home quite a lot or went away with my parents like on small camping holidays. I just tended to sort of bake with mum and my love of baking comes from that. It always makes me feel like I'm at home when I'm baking. It's quite a nice food for like bringing people together. Like there's nothing better than sitting down with friends and like eating cake and chatting over like a pot of tea. I grew up in a small town called Royston, which is outside of Cambridge. I was very ostracized during school. It's that thing of the kids know that something's different about you, but you're not sure about it yourself. I had like a very terrible school experience. I got bullied consistently. I had got beaten up a lot. I don't have many happy memories from school. As a result, I used to spend a lot of my youth <laughs> sort of playing Dungeons and Dragons, it's like anything to escape the grim reality that I was facing. Because when I was young, there was a thing called Section 28. This was a ruling brought in by Margaret Thatcher and the Tory government that uh, schools weren't allowed to talk about. Basically just seen as like, any kind of LGBT stuff was just not allowed to be spoken about at all. There was no one to kind of tell you that actually it's okay to be feeling this way or, you know, these kinds of feelings happen to people. So I remember spending a lot of like my childhood really confused, like not knowing what was right and what was wrong. And then when I started to question these feelings inside me, because I had so many, so much a negative experience at school with people sort of saying, oh, you're, you're gay, you're queer, faggot, really intensely. I associated any kind of those behaviors with negative feelings. It took me a while to come around to actually, this is fine, this is who I am, there's nothing wrong with it. And I carried like a lot of that internal homophobia with me as well when I first moved to London, especially like the first few years I was here, I was very much like, oh, that person's too flamboyant, it's too much, why are you showing off? And then managed to sort of slowly unpack that in myself and realize that actually, well, this person's just expressing themselves in a way they feel comfortable with and that's amazing. Being aware when you're internalizing your own homophobia. If somebody's being feminine or they're perhaps louder than you would like, kind of like go with it, just enjoy it. Give them the freedom to play with that and also maybe play with it yourself. Don't feel like just because you're one way, you have to be that way. Like society loves to put us into boxes and there's a lot of people now that are kind of breaking out of these boxes. I think it's just really important to give yourself the space to experiment with these things but also give other people the space to experiment them without judging and just giving them moral support and being there if they need it. Try and push yourself out of your boundaries. Hang around with people outside of your own race or sex or sexual preferences. Find some other commonalities with people. I think that's like a really good, healthy place to be.